Why are we okay with it, uh, but not Canada and EU and other countries, right? What, they obviously have flags, they have advanced systems as well. Um, so I'm trying to get to the bottom of why they're not okay, but we should be. Um, and, and so I've got some real concerns. Any information you've gathered you can share with us? Well, we heard from the FAA was that they're, they told us that they're working on a patch, they're working on a software patch uh, that's going to be due in April. That was their response. Um, um, so I'm trying to understand, well, can they fly these planes without that patch? Why are we flying these planes without that patch? Is that why the other countries are concerned and have grounded their fleets? And I think these are questions that we've got to get to the bottom of and, you know, out of an abundance of caution. And there's obviously public officials on Democrats and Republicans who said maybe we should ground the planes until we get some answers. Um, I heard from the pilots and others who said we feel good in terms of our conversations with, with uh, the FAA and with the airlines. So I think that we need some more transparency behind this because obviously passengers are rightly concerned. I find it striking that so many countries have gone ahead and, and taken this step. Why do you think that is? That's exactly what I want to know. I mean, I, I, do they know something we don't know and should we know it? I'm hoping the FAA is working with our partner countries around the world who obviously have uh, first-rate systems for, for airline safety. And I want to know if the, if, why are we okay with it? Do we know something that they don't know? And that's what we're trying to get to the bottom of is why I reach out to the FAA and we'll hope to have further conversations. And I know that there are many members, and that's why I'm talking to the pilots as well, so, uh, and the pilots union, there are many members who are concerned about this. And as you pointed out, we have a lot of people who fly out of my, uh, right, out of, leave my district every day, both to work at Newark Airport, but to fly out of it too. So it's a very important question. Yeah. All right. We'll keep following. So, Congressman, also, what are you hearing from people as we pass uh, through the tax filing season? They've, a lot of cases are, are facing higher bills because of the so-called uh, loss of the SALT deduction or the SALT cap and all of that. Spring selling season, housing-wise, is just getting underway. Is your district doing okay? Well, Kelly, we've talked about this on this show. You know, I've heard from people for months who were panicked about this and the impact of their of facing higher taxes um, uh, in, in my district in northern New Jersey because of SALT, where they gutted SALT and capped it out, as you know, with the deduction at $10,000 effectively creating double taxation. Um, so now that we're going to tax season, the number of calls coming into the office are up. I'm hearing it from, from all over the district saying, wait, my taxes just went up. Why am I paying higher taxes? Our taxes are too high. We've got to figure out a way to reinstate SALT, and I've got legislation, bipartisan legislation, to do that. But also, you know, we've got to cut taxes at all levels and make things more affordable for people. There's just no reason why with health care costs going up and, and costs overall going up, and now, of course, property values in northern New Jersey going down because of this. People can't afford to pay higher taxes. It's ridiculous. How do you cut taxes, though? I mean, that's, that's well, you the most well, difficult thing you, in politics. Yeah, but you reinstate SALT. And there are several. I've got several pay-fors that actually will allow us to pay for this. Um, and, you know, and uh, uh, frankly, we've got to start looking at these other states that take far too much of our dollars, of our taxpayer dollars in New Jersey, um, and they stuff them in their pockets. And, you know, my district gets back historically 33 cents on the dollar, and Mississippi gets back $4.38 for every tax dollar they send to Washington. There's the problem. Let's look at those formulas, get those dollars back. We've got a gateway project, a tunnel between New York and New Jersey, a crumbling tunnels that need to be fixed. We've got real issues in Jersey. We've got to get costs down, and we've got to fix our infrastructure. And I'm, I'm just sick and tired of sending dollars to these other states, which they should be coming back to New York, New Jersey, to our area. Right, but, yeah, I mean, it's a, a tricky thing. They're drawing on federal programs. It's not as if they're saying we're, we want to pick New Jersey's pocket. So what, what are you going to get rid of the federal programs? I mean, it's... No, but you can look at things like the formulas for transportation infrastructure, right? The formulas right now, you know, were made years ago at a time where the system, you know, where, where things were different. Now that New Jersey, we've lost, you know, losing people, losing population because of these taxes. And now we've got to make sure we look at this again and say, actually, maybe given that New Jersey pays in more, New York pays in more, more of the dollars should be coming back because of our weather and because of our, our system is, you know, our infrastructure is older. More should be focused on, on our area of the country. And I think these are the kind of issues and the debates we should be having. And I plan to have them in the coming months as we introduce bipartisan infrastructure legislation.